Thank you for joining us online at Path Point Fellowship Church, where we're all about bringing God and people together. If you're in the Amarillo area, we'd love you to join us Sunday mornings at 1030. If you'd like to partner with us financially, you can do so by going to pathpointfellowship.com slash giving. We hope that you enjoy today's message and pray that it's relevant and impacts your life. I'm so excited to be with you today. I want to start off by just thanking you for being at Path Point Fellowship Church today. Um, you know, it's a privilege and an honor to be in front of you. And um, I want you to know that God sees my ugly sweater. <laughs> and he sees that you came here today. Yeah, I wore my ugly sweater. All right. And, um, and, and I ran into Blake this morning. And um, the first thing he said, he's like, are, are you preaching in that? I said, yeah, I, I actually am, and nobody will listen because I have this, there's cats on my shirt, all right? But anyway, I don't know. It doesn't get any uglier than cats on a shirt. If you have a shirt that you actually wear with cats on a shirt, don't anymore. No, okay. <laughs> I'm just helping you and your style points out. I'm just helping you here. I'm, I'm here to, to preach the good news and give you good style tips, all right? But hey, we're so glad that you're here. God sees that you're here today. And I want you to know, God has something for you. God has something for you today. I hope that you came expecting. I hope that you came ready. I hope that you came to get something from God because God is a giver. And he has more than enough for this whole room. He can meet every single person exactly where they are at right now. No matter what situation, circumstance you find yourself in, God knows about it. And if you're looking for an answer, he has it. If you're looking for hope, he's the one who's hope. If you need a little joy this morning, he's the one who is joy for you. God is here, amen? amen. We pray this over you every single week, and we say it as we start our service. We believe that you're highly favored, and you are blessed by God, and that your best days, greater days are ahead of you in Jesus' name. If you receive that, say amen. Come on, give God a hand clap this morning. Amen. Well, we are super excited to start a new series with you today called Finish Strong. And here we are, we're coming to the end of the year. We have 27 days left, if I have my math right. So it's coming. 2017 is just around the corner. And I believe that God is wanting us to finish strong. Look at your neighbor and say, finish strong. We're going to be coming out of two scriptures today. First one's out of Philippians chapter 3, and the second one is Hebrews chapter 12. And so um, you can follow along in your insert this morning. We'll have the scripture on the screen as well. But let's dive into Philippians 3 verse 12. It says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things. This is the Apostle Paul talking. Or that I've already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that so easily slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. The champion. I love that part. He is the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. I want to title today's message, One Thing, One Thing. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for Sunday Fun Day. And it's the opportunity to come and celebrate in the house of God. And God, we, we thank you for being here. We thank you that your word says where two or more are gathered. You are in our midst. And we worship you today, God. We say that you are our one thing. You are the one that we adore. And today we open ourselves up to you to receive all that you have for us. We open up every part of us to receive all that you have. Holy Spirit, I ask that you lead and guide our time in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Did anyone else find it a little hard 
to get back into the swing of things this week. After the holidays, after all the turkey, Monday came around, and it wasn't just Monday, it was Monday, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know about you, but it was just hard to get things going. It even filtered over into Tuesday and a little bit of Wednesday, just trying to get this whole ball rolling again. You know, this is what it's like at this time of the year, isn't it? Here we find ourselves in the holidays, and and let's just be real this morning. Can we all just, let's just get real right off the bat here. Y'all don't want to do nothing the rest of this month. I know you don't. You know how I know? Because I don't want to do anything the rest of this month. This is a time where, if we're not careful, we tend to coast, don't we? We want to coast right through to the finish line. We want to coast right through to the end of the year. I mean, why should we have to work hard at work? We've worked hard all year. Let's just take a month off. I mean, we just had Thanksgiving, Christmas is coming in three weeks. We might as well waste those three weeks, right? We just have this mindset where we just want to relax and coast. And what I found is if we're not careful, this same mindset, it can actually filter over into our spiritual life. Are you listening this morning? It can filter over and rub off onto our relationship with God to where we coast at the end of the year with him. Now, before I go any further this morning, I want to let you know I'm all about resting. I'm all about relaxing. It is the holidays, and you should rest and relax and enjoy your family and and friends and, and the actual holiday and celebrate. Absolutely. You know, God was the very one who invented rest. He rested on the seventh day. He gave us this day, the Sabbath, Sunday, to rest. But notice that he rested after he finished on the sixth day. God finished strong. And I believe that God wants you to finish this year strong. You see, there's something to be said for someone who finishes. You see, God wants you to finish strong this year because he knows what it will produce in 2017. He knows where it will have you start out in 2017 if you finish out 2016 strong. I remember back in my days playing football at West Texas A&M. I was a freshman, and um, this is, I'm about to let y'all in on one of the most epic stories to ever happen to the football team at WT. Are you ready? All right, this is a story that is talked about and will be talked about for centuries. All right, that was a little bit of exaggeration, but here I was, a freshman at WT, and um, it was the off-season, off-season football, and, uh, and the weather outside was, oh, na, 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 na. okay, the weather was a lot like it was this weekend, okay? It was foggy, dreary, um, it was wet, and it was cold. And so instead of going outside to work out and get our workout in, we were inside, and we were inside in the gym. Anytime you went into the gym to work out, you knew that you were probably going to throw up, all right? You knew it wasn't going to be good. So we go into the gym, we start our workout, and here's the workout. We all get in lines, and we, we step, and when, when it's our turn, we step onto the court. They're having us do rolls this way and rolls that way, front rolls, back rolls, getting up, quick feet, jumping jacks, whatever, and then they would blow the whistle. When they blew the whistle, you, wherever you were at, you got up as fast as you could, and you sprinted to the end of the line. So when you finished, you would run all the way back around the court, and you would try and hurry and get back in line before it was your turn again. All right, because they were rolling, right? Well, here we are, we're working out, and it's about halfway through the workout. And my offensive coordinator, he goes over and he stands at the back of the court at the last corner. He just stands there and just looking at it. And I'm just going to give you all the Christian version this morning, all right? <laughs> he said something, and, and the gist was this. You guys better not cut this corner one more time. So here we were, we would get finished, and guys were getting tired. They were wanting to get back as quick as they could, so they were cutting across to hurry and get in line so they could rest. He said, no, no more. You cut this corner one more time, see what happens. <clears throat> so here we were. <laughs> guys were tired. I kept my eye on my offensive coordinator, and I saw him. He stayed in the same spot, and he, uh, as, the, as the workout went on, he just started smirking and shaking his head do one of these. Okay. 
And I knew it was going to be hell later. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. And sure enough, we get done with the workout. The whole team comes together. We break it out. Boom. All right, we're, 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 we're all walking out. One second, two seconds. I'm like, oh, yeah. And then I hear it. Offense over here. I said, yep, here we go. <laughs> so the whole offense goes over. He says in, in the Christian version, you guys don't want to do things right. You don't want to finish the right way. You guys want to cut corners. Everybody, wall, uh, wall squats right now. Get on the wall. Now, this is the whole offense. He said, we're going for a minute. We have 350-pound linemen up there. You can do, a minute doesn't sound long, but when you're 350, we didn't make it a minute. He said, fine, you can't do that push-up position. So we get in push-up position. We didn't make it then. And then it happens. Look at your neighbor and say, it happened. <laughs> then it happens. He says, fine, get up. And then he just starts jogging out the gym. Me, all of the play, we get up and we like. We're looking at each other. What do we do? He's jogging out the gym. We're like, I guess we'll follow him, right? All right, so we start jogging out. He takes us all the way out the gym into the cold, into the wet. Guys were working out inside, had their shirts off. It's freezing outside. And he's just, he's just jogging. He doesn't say how long we're going to jog. He doesn't say where we're going. He's just going. Now, let me tell you a little bit of something about my offensive coordinator. He was an ex-Marine. <laughs> we had just got through with an entire workout. He had already put us through extra, and now he's jogging, and we're following him. And we're all still like jogging, like, is this gonna really, what's, I mean, guys are starting to cry. No, not really. But we don't know, we don't know what's gonna happen. And we're, we, he takes us down, if you're familiar with WT, the President's Road. It's just a long, well, it's like every road here in Amarillo. It's just long and flat, all right? And you can see for miles, and we just keep running. And finally, he stops. We're like, yes, he stopped. Everybody in the ditch. He throws us all in the ditch. Yeah, he threw us all in the ditch. <laughs> he says, start doing sit-ups. We start doing sit-ups. He says, okay, now push-up position, push-ups. Ah, we're going, we're going. And then we're like, all right, finally we're done. He's like, everybody up. And he starts jogging again. <laughs> he goes further down the road, throws us in the ditch again. This went on and on and on until finally, finally he let us go back. And when I say he let us go back, he let us jog all the way back to the gym. Now, that was one of the craziest experiences I've ever had in my life. But I learned something that day. When you don't finish strong, there are consequences. <laughs> there are consequences for not finishing strong. There are consequences for not finishing the right way. You see, nobody gets to where they want to get in life by cutting corners. Nobody has ever reached the pinnacle of their life or got to the goal they, were, they set out for by cutting corners or not doing the little things. The people who are great, the people who get to where they want to be, the people who reach the place where God has for them are people who know how to finish and finish strong. You see, you got to learn how to finish. We had to learn how to finish. You see, you got to do the little things. You got to do the things that nobody else wants to do. Everybody gets tired when you work out. It takes the person who knows how to finish, who's mentally tough, who, as Paul says, presses to the end, who is focused, that finishes strong. See, I learned there were consequences for not finishing strong, but I also got to say, I learned something else. On the flip side, I learned that there's a prize waiting for those who finish. There is a prize waiting for people who know how to finish and finish strong. Paul said it this way, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. What did he do? He pressed to reach the end. He finished and what did he receive? A heavenly prize. Why? Because there's a prize awaiting those who finish that people who don't never get to. Let me tell you something. Everybody knows how to start. 
It's easy to start something. It's another thing to finish. I want to let you know as a team at WT that year, we learned how to finish. Let me tell you, all it takes is one of those events in your life. We learned how to finish. And you know what? We went on to win a conference championship that year. And we won a conference championship the next year. And we won a conference championship the next year. There's a prize waiting for those who finish. I want you to know today the same is true for you. The same is true for you in your spiritual life. When it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the relationship that you have with God, he has a prize waiting for you. He has a place for you to get to, a level for you to reach. And let me tell you, God wants to give it to you. God wants it so much for your life, but you're going to have to finish, and you're going to have to finish strong to get it. Are you hearing me today? God wants you to finish strong. Say, I'm a finisher, and I finish strong. See, this is what Paul was talking to us about in Philippians chapter 3. I'm, I'm just jacked up right now. This is good stuff. Philippians chapter 3, he's talking to us about finishing, and he's talking to us about how to do it. And what's interesting is you find as Paul is talking in, in chapter 3, he's, he's talking to us in the context of an interesting time in his life where he has uh, begun to evaluate some things. He's turned inward. Some introspection has taken place. And he comes to this conclusion. He tells us that he's done all these things in his life, all these things that you could be proud of. He's become all these things. And then he says this, but I count it all, I see it all as worthless. That's the word that he uses. Worthless when compared to knowing Christ and being one with him. He said, I've done it all, and it's all worthless compared to knowing Christ and becoming one with him. Let me tell you something. Paul never coasted in his spiritual life. You can read his writings. He wasn't a coaster. He was a finisher. This is what he's talking to us about. And he's talking about, uh, to us about what's most important. That's his relationship with Jesus. This is where we pick up in verse 12. And he says this, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things. In other words, I, I don't, I don't want to say that I've already reached this place of knowing Christ or becoming one with him to the level that I want to get to. I haven't reached it yet, but here it is. But I press, say press. I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. He's saying, I'm going to get to the end. Paul is saying, I have a goal. I have somewhere I want to get to, a level that I want to reach, and, and I haven't got there yet, but I'm a finisher, and I finish strong, and I'm going to press until I get there. I'm going to press on to possess that perfection for which Christ possessed me. Now, I want us just to pause for a second. I want us just to think about Paul when he wrote this. Just think about it. How did he write this section of scripture. Leave that up there if you would. How did he write it? I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and make an educated guess. This is not how Paul wrote this. Well, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things. Or have I reached perfection? Oh, but I press. Whew. On to possess that perfection. For which Christ first possessed me. That sounds good. People in the coming centuries are really going to like how I wrote that. I press on. I'm going to press on to possess that perfection. There's a lot of alliteration in there. I like that. We'll keep that. Paul didn't write it that way. I believe he couldn't wait to get it off of his mind and his spirit and onto paper. I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ possessed me. He had some energy about it. He had some passion about it. You can see his fervor in the writings. Would you let Paul's writing just get all over you this morning? Let his passion just get on you. Let his energy just get on you. You know, what you, know, you know what? You can't finish without energy. You can't finish without passion. The people who are not passionate will not finish. If they do, they won't finish strong. It's going to take some passion and some energy and some focus and some pressing. Paul wants you to press here. I'm here to inspire you today. 
press, to finish strong. Now, here's the interesting thing. Paul, he was not, the reason he was like this wasn't just because God created him that way. He wasn't someone special in the fact like, well, he, well, well, Paul could do this because he was that type A personality and he had a lot of passion and so he would just go after things. No, I believe he caught hold of something. And what he grabbed a hold of, what he found out is that it's not just that we should press on, that we should finish because that's the good thing to do, but it's because this is exactly what God wants for you and me. God wants you to be a finisher. Say, I'm a finisher and I finish strong. God wants you to press. This is something that God wants for you. Notice what it says. I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ, Jesus, first possessed me. Did you know that Jesus possessed you for perfection? He said, I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ, Jesus, first possessed me. In other words, when Jesus came into your life, he did not intend to leave you where you were at. He laid hold of you, and his goal is to bring you up. His goal is to show you a life and a life more abundantly. Now, here's the cool thing about Jesus. He will meet you where you're at, but he will not leave you where you're at. He will meet you where you're at, but he will not leave you there. See, he possessed you for perfection. Here's the point. Jesus possessed you for purpose. He possessed you for purpose. In other words, he has a calling for your life. He has a goal for you to reach. He has a finish line for you to cross. He has somewhere for you to get to. He has a level for you to reach. And you know the cool thing about it? He's the one that will get you there. He's the very one. That will, be the, that will be there to help you reach the goal that he has for you. He's your coach. He's your brother in Christ. He's the one who comes alongside you and inspires you and then says, look, you got to do this thing, but you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. I'll be your strength. I'll be your help. I'll be your wisdom. I want you to finish, and I'm the finisher, so I'll help you finish. Jesus came into your life to bring you to salvation, but he didn't want it to stop there. This is why in Hebrews chapter 12, it says that he is the one who initiates and perfects our faith. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on, say it with me, Jesus, the champion who initiates Look at it. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. There is a perfecting that takes place. Jesus came into your life and he initiated. What is initiation? That's salvation. And then he wants to transform your life, perfects our faith. That is transformation. See, here's what happened is Jesus came into your life and he made your spirit perfect. He says that he made us righteous, that he put us in right standing with God. But he doesn't want to stop there. He wants that perfection. He wants that righteousness to come out and to begin to manifest into your actions, into your thoughts, into your feelings, into the way that you see people, into the way that you do your job, into the way that you love your wife or your husband, into the way that you parent your kids. Every aspect of your life, he's wanting to perfect our faith. In other words, he wants us to finish. He wants us to grow. He wants us to move up. I got good news for you today. Jesus has given you the ability to do it. Jesus has given you the ability to finish. He's given you the ability. See, I'm not talking to you today about something that you can't do. I'm not even talking to you about something that you don't already have on the inside of you. He has given you the ability because he gave you himself. He has given you the ability to do this. See, God was a smart God. In the Old Testament, he tried to get people to come up. He tried to get them to move on up. 
moving on up. He's moving on up. And they couldn't. They couldn't do it. So what did God do? He sent them the person that could help them do it. He sent us Jesus. He sent us the son. He sent us the finisher to help us finish. He's given us the ability to finish strong. Amen. There's a a story in the Bible of the woman who had the issue of blood. Many of you know this story. She had struggled for 12 years, the Bible said. Struggled for 12 years with this issue. And she went to doctor after doctor after doctor. And it says that she never got better. In fact, it says that she got worse. Now, I don't know about you, but if it went on for 12 years, I probably would give up. I would probably have enough. I mean, 12 years is a long time to be suffering. But this lady didn't give up. This woman was a finisher. Say a finisher. She was a finisher. She had been suffering for 12 years, and then she hears about this man named Jesus. That Jesus is coming to her town. And she thinks to herself, if I can just do one thing, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just reach him, I could be healed. Jesus comes into town. There's a huge crowd around him because he's the most popular guy in town. People are all around him. And this woman with the issue, you know what she does? She's towards the back of the crowd. But because she's a finisher, she presses through the crowd. Just like Paul said, he pressed on to possess that perfection. She pressed through the crowd. And as Jesus was walking by, she reached out and she touched the very edge and the end of his garment. And in an instant, she was healed. In a moment, all the things that she had been suffering for and suffering with came to an end, came to a stop. In other words, she got the prize she was looking for. And you know why she got the prize? You know why she got her healing? Because she pressed on and she finished. She did that one thing. She knew it was just one thing. And she pressed through the crowd and she reached out and she got to her finish line. And when she got to her finish line, there was a prize waiting for her that she wouldn't have got if she wouldn't have kept going, that she wouldn't have got if she would have given up in year eight, year nine, in year 10. I'm talking to somebody today. Uh, she, she wouldn't have got it. If she would have gave, gave up, she didn't give up though. She didn't care who was around. She found a way to finish and get to Jesus. And because she did, she got her prize. I want to challenge you today. Will you become a finisher? Will you finish 2016 out strong? Will you you decide right now, I'm not going to coast. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to coast through the finish line. I'm going to run through it. I'm gonna, just like that video, I'm going to dive if I have to, to get to my finish line. You see, God wants you to finish out this year because he knows what 2017 holds for you. And you can't grab a hold of two, what he has in 2017 if you don't let go of what's been given to you in 2016. You've been given something to take care of. You've been given a level to reach. You've been given something to finish. It's time to finish that thing so you can take the new thing in 2017. There's no use in bringing the baggage of 2016 into 2017. You know what I want for you or what I don't? I don't want you to have to do any extra fun runs in 2017. You don't need any wall squats. You don't need any extra push-ups. You don't need to go jogging and not knowing when it's going to stop. You need a fresh start. You need to take on the new year, have a new beginning, and keep moving up. Today, you might be asking yourself, okay, Keith, well, how do I do that? How is it that I do this thing that you're talking about? I'm going to close right here in Philippians chapter 3. I say we do what Paul did. 
He said, no, dear brothers and sisters, I've not achieved it. I haven't reached it yet, but I focus on this one thing. Everybody say one thing. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. I want to ask you today, what is your one thing? What is your one thing? You know how Paul finished? He did one thing. For him, it was to forget the past and look forward to what lies ahead. He had to forget his past in order to finish strong. Hebrews tells us that we need to let go and drop the weight that, sl- that slows us down to get rid of the sin that so easily entangles us. Maybe it's sin that slows us down. For the woman, her one thing was to touch that garment. What is your one thing? I want you to think about that this morning. What is that one thing that could be holding you back? What is that one thing that you know you need to finish? What is the one thing that could be stopping you? from finishing the year out strong. Maybe it's like Paul and it is your past. I don't know what that is for you today. That's for you and the Holy Spirit to decide. I believe he's showing you right now. But if you'll do that one thing, you'll reach the end of your race and you will receive the prize that is waiting for you. Say, I'm a finisher and I finish strong. If you would take out your Connect card this morning, I felt led to to ask you to do this, to to give you something that I think will help you finish this year out strong. If you look on the back of your Connect card, there's a a box, and um, it's right here. You can see it right here, and it says, Commit to attend the rest of this series. Whether you wanted to or not, you started this series out today. You didn't know we were starting a new series, but you started it out. I want to ask you to finish strong. I want to ask you to do something very simple. Come to church for the next two weeks in a row. Commit. If if, if this is something that is just like, yep, I need to do this, will you check that box? And even if it's not this and you just know, I'm just going to finish. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to finish this strong. Check that box to commit to attend the rest of this series. Would you do that this morning? Because we're going to be talking to you over the next couple weeks about that one thing, about the thing that could keep you from finishing strong, maybe about the one thing that you need to do to finish strong. And you'll finish out 2016 and start 2017 like you've never started a year before. Amen? Did you get anything out of this today? Can we give God a hand clap? While you have your Connect card out, I want to go ahead and give you your next steps. And Pastor Jordan, he, he mentioned this to you earlier. Um, but we do this every Sunday because we want to uh, give you the opportunity to take the message and apply it to your life right now. Apply it to your life today and this week. Why? Because we know that faith without works is... And so we want to put to work our faith. We want to take the word and apply it. And so here's your first step for this week. Think about that one thing that keeps you from finishing strong. You can write this on that line. Think about that one thing that keeps me from finishing strong. Maybe the Lord's already showed that to you. Maybe you need to just uh, have some quiet time with him this week and and talk that out. I want you to think about that. And then your next step, the second one, meditate on Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14. I said this earlier in the message, but let his, Paul's passion just get on you. Read that and just get inspired. And, and, and it's, it's, like, it's like getting a motivational talk every morning. Go and read this, and it will help you press on and reach the end of the race. Amen?